Yay Networks. 13 has been my lucky number for a while. Like, it's always a sign of good things to come for me. This is 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Breaking down every song, every Easter egg, every era, and every theory. Hosted by the biggest Swifties. Nick Adams, Anna Casiejos, Amy Nichols, and Lacey G. Welcome to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. My name's Nick Adams. I'm Anna. Amy. And I'm Lacey G. And today we're breaking down Taylor Swift's song, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. There's nothing like this, Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince is the seventh track on Taylor's 2019 album, Lover. It was written by Taylor and a guy named Joel Little. And as you'll find out, this song has a lot of meaning to it. And he also helped Taylor write, You Need to Calm Down which has some political undertones, the man, political undertones, and me. So I don't think there's a lot of politics in me, but he wrote some <laughs> other politically charged songs on the album. Um, Love it. And, you know, Taylor joined TikTok this week, right, Anna? I was Yes, I was about to say, I know we're about to, you know, get into our, mm-hmm. our groove talking about this song specifically, but before that, Taylor Swift joined TikTok, which is very exciting, but I'm not going to lie. I'm a little nervous. I <laughs> I don't know why. I just, I mean, I'm sure Taylor's been on TikTok before, you know, scrolling, you know, anonymously or whatever. But I don't know. It's like, it's like she just found my diary because now she can see our TikTok <laughs> posts. And I don't, I'm like embarrassed. I like went back. So we're on TikTok at the 13 podcast. And I was watching all of our videos, but from Taylor's perspective. Mm. And how did they hold up? I think pretty good. I think she'll probably think we're a little ridiculous. I'm not. I mean, <laughs> that's the that's the truth. But it's very exciting. But I'm also just really nervous. I don't know why. Well, Anna, I know why you're nervous because this podcast collectively is ours, and we all contribute to it. TikTok is your baby, and yeah. you're the master brains behind that. Now, with that being said, I still think you have nothing to be nervous about because you do a fantastic job, and thank you so much for everything that you do on TikTok because right. you make us look great. So you Time. have nothing to worry about, but you know that she's scrolling and she wants to see, which gives us even more exposure to her. So now she has two reasons to check us out because of this podcast and because of TikTok. But as soon as we said this, that she's now on TikTok and we're even more exposed, immediately I said, you guys need to post that Lakes video that you will not post. She needs to see it in the entirety. She needs to see everything that you've done, Anna. Don't hold back. I guarantee that if I post the video that Nick and I made like a year ago, mm-hmm. it's this like homemade video of the lakes, the song, the lakes. If I post that, she is going to block us immediately. She <laughs> is going to make sure that we never get to go to her concert. She's going to say, these people are insane. I think it's for the better good that that one stays in the 13 podcast vault. <laughs> hmm. What if Taylor requests it? Well, then, yeah, obviously. <laughs> if, Taylor, if Taylor requests it, I say we, we do one better and we just do it for her in person. We'll recreate. <laughs> there we go. Our, oh, wow. There this, we go. This really lame, like, 10 second skit that we made up uh, using her lyrics. That's what yeah. I think we should do. That's a good idea. And I'm saying this just only poking fun, and that's it. But if somebody's going to be embarrassed about our TikTok, shouldn't it be Amy? Why? 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> one time. Yeah, that was pretty bad. When? Just because she was she was really embarrassed of that one TikTok, which was so cute, so and she just giggled. Yeah, I yeah. just like, kind of fall out of camera sight. <laughs> <laughs> that was just bad. Was I great. think you're precious, and I thought it was really, really good. But just poking fun, I just had to point that out. I do think, I, well, I'm a little worried that Taylor's not going to be sleep sleeping even more just because she's already doing so much, and now she's on TikTok. I mean, it how she can get all this content for TikTok if she's working on re-recording all That's her true. albums. That's true. Think, she has a new pastime. Do you think Taylor has already gotten the, uh, hold up, you've been scrolling for way too long. <laughs> and does she listen to the person? Does she like, yeah, for my mental health, I do need to stop watching TikTok. No one listens think- to that person, right? No. Like I get that guy like every day and I get so mad. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to keep scrolling. <laughs> So mad. <laughs> what I'm nervous about her joining TikTok, guys, is that this may not have been the best week because uh, I don't love Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. I don't want her. <gasps> I don't want her to tiptoe over to our podcast 
and like maybe Ooh. she'll see a tease. And I don't want her Nick, to be why like, did oh, you wait. just say that? Huh? Because Amy, go like, cut his mic off. Go cut his mic off right I don't now. Like song that much. <laughs> I don't like it that much. Do you guys really like this song? Well, let's get into it, shall we? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we're all recording this separately. But just so the listeners know, Amy and I, Amy came over to my house because we live somewhat close to each other. Yeah. And I have two microphones. And she is sitting in my son's room next to his race car bed. And <laughs> I'm so sitting cute. like behind a closed door. <laughs> <laughs> on my couch so just picture that picture amy surrounded by like paw patrol toys I'm, I'm gonna be honest i was a little worried about sitting in his little couch because my kids they had accidents <laughs> and i was yeah. like i felt for a little wet spot first before i put down yeah i think i think we're good i think we're okay with that chair if it was my daughter's room who's trying to potty train right now then we'd have a problem maybe okay. but we're good adorable right now. yeah i know our little home studios this is so cute <laughs> So I do have to say, though, before it was decided that Amy was going to go over to Nick's house, I was like, well, we'll just record how Amy and I do for our other podcast, Loose Lips and Childbearing Hips. I call her on the phone. And so I have the microphone and she just talks on the phone. And that's the way that we do it. And Amy side texts me and she was like, no offense, but this podcast is a little bit more important than our other (laughs) one. So I need a legit microphone. Yeah. So thank you for that. She's on. But also agree. Sorry. Also agree. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So when when you guys first heard this song in, you know, 2019, when it first came out, what was y'all's first reaction when you heard Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince? I liked it. And I just thought it was high school drama Mm -hmm. because Taylor has so many different meanings and even though she's come out and said what this song is about and that's obviously what we're going to get into there's still different parallels to it as well Mm -hmm. so it sounds like it's teenage drama just the anguish of high school and being a part of the losing team and being scrutinized and always having to have a smile on your face and act like everything's okay but there there's still other things that it's about as well besides the major point that she makes and then stuff that was going on right at the same time a lot of exposures that were going on at the time so there's a lot of meaning to this song of course it's a taylor swift song when i first heard it, i was like okay we're back to using this like high school imagery to talk about i at first i just thought it was like a love song a somewhat of a almost romeo and juliet us against the world kind of song and mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I didn't care for like the beat. I was just like, all right, I'm kind of over it. I felt like it was kind of like backsliding. Like I thought we had moved past the high school right. Taylor. I feel like a lot of people had that criticism. And um, there was this one lady in Cosmo Magazine, Emma Baby. And she said, Taylor is still relying on high school jock and cheerleader tropes to fuel her songwriting in, in her 30s. And she just, obviously, I mean, I didn't get it at first, but Emma didn't get it. And I, mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, it's just way more than that. And it was ranking on the whole album. It was probably on the lower half of my favorites when I first heard it. But it's been a grower. And now that I understand it, I mm-hmm. appreciate it more. I think like when we first got the track list to Lover, like before hearing the album, I was the most excited for this song because to me it sounded like a Harry Potter title. Miss <laughs> yes. and the Heartbreak Prince. And... I didn't know what it was going to be about. Obviously, it was just the track list. And I think kind of like everybody else, like surface level, it's like, okay, yeah, high school, you know, keeping score, like whatever, whatever. And then we kind of broke it down when it first came out. And then I started to think about it differently. And now I can't listen to it without thinking about how deep it is. And then after, especially where we are now, a few years down the road, after having the documentary, Miss Americana, and things Mm -hmm. like that, it's like, Once again, Taylor put out something really good and it took me three years to understand it, you know, like to fully, fully understand it. I do want to go back to the Harry Potter thing, though, because I saw a lot of people thought this as well. Miss Americana and the Half-Blood Prince. Mm -hmm. And they theorize. um, How how do you say that? Theorized? Yeah, you (laughs) got it. That's going to be another (laughs) hang up. Okay, I'm sorry. I was was like, (laughs) yeah, you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, they said um, If she can write songs inspired by Game of Thrones and a Netflix movie, she can also be inspired by Harry Potter. We spend the book trying to figure out the secret identity of the Half-Blood Prince, and she wants us to figure out the secret identity here of the Heartbreak Prince. And someone else said, everybody knows she's a huge Game of Thrones fan, and this was written before the finale, but they said with the finale coming up, could this song be about Daenerys and Jon? Danny is Miss Americana, and Jon is the Heartbreak Hmm. Prince. Hmm. It just Uh, proves that it's 
can be interpreted on whatever our beliefs and thoughts are, really. I mm-hmm. mean, she's come out and said what it's about, but we can mm-hmm. interpret any way we want to it, how it feels to us personally. Mm-hmm. And I think that's guys, really cool. If we're yeah. talking Harry Potter, and like, I mean this in a nice way, I'm not being mean. Taylor's definitely a Hermione. She's smart. She's pretty. She can solve puzzles really easily. Mm-hmm. She, she likes she's, cats. Yeah, she likes mm-hmm. cats. She's like the smartest in the room. She's 10 steps ahead of everyone else. Mm-hmm. And in the Harry Potter thing, what was the necklace that Hermione had where she could time travel? Taylor probably has one of those. That's how she can do so much. <laughs> she, that's how she can fit in so much in her day. She can time travel back and forth just like Hermione did. Okay, haven't we talked about it before on this podcast, like Harry Potter related, Taylor Swift related, that if Taylor were to have Horcruxes, is that how you say it? <laughs> Horcrux? I have, a horcrux. I struggle with that word. Horcrux, yeah. You know how like in, uh, like Voldemort has like seven or whatever. Uh, <laughs> Taylor would have some and like one would be like the post of the five holes in the fence. <laughs> That's one. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, have one to, of her, have to figure it'd, be, out they all are. it'd be one of her cats for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Her I'm diary. Sure one be, of them has to be like her yeah, diary. diary. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a truck, someone's truck. Um, mm-hmm. Ooh, the rings the scarf. that she does. She does rings every time she comes with an album, right? She designs a ring. Rings, like the red, the red, red ring one. for sure. Yeah, the red ring, the scarf. We got, we got them. We found mm-hmm. them. Taylor, sorry, we already found them. All. <laughs> a willow, a willow tree. I'm sure. Yes. Uh-huh. The oh. suitcase that she hid in. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. There's one for or every. Or are era. each are each of her ex lovers a Horcrux in themselves? Because <laughs> like people can be Horcruxes. Right, so like maybe That's maybe fun. a little yeah. piece of hers with Tom Hiddleston, a little piece of hers yeah. with Harry Styles, and yeah, so yeah, on. Yeah. I don't think Taylor Lautner got any of her. I don't think, but we've moved on. <laughs> we've got way far past we whatever we were talking about. Uh, so yeah, so this is kind of like half love song, half like political song, from what I'm getting the vibe of. Right, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. I saw some people saying like, okay, the. Uh, heartbreak prince some some think okay on the love song side it could be joe but then because it's kind of like us against the world we're gonna tank, paint the town blue and stuff and then others when people are thinking like maybe this is trump then that's the political side of he's mm-hmm. the heartbreak mm-hmm. prince a person that we thought would come save us but isn't um, i also heard that she was naming herself the heartbreak prince because she oh. uh, well the world assumes that she breaks up with everyone and then writes a song about it mm-hmm. oh, so she could so be talking about names. herself like she is miss americana and she is also the heartbreak prince okay mm-hmm. wow interesting well and i, I like saw that, that she one. said she said in an interview with rolling stone she said there's so many influences that go into this particular song i wrote it a couple months after midterm elections and i wanted to take the idea of politics and pick a metaphorical place for that to exist so i was thinking about the traditional american high school where you have all these kinds of social events that can make someone feel completely a lot and not a lot completely alienated and i think a lot of people in our (laughs) did i really wow Mm -hmm. you did (laughs) alienated (laughs) <laughs> alienated <laughs> i'm rubbing off on people i am so sorry Anna, you're better than that <laughs> people were theorizing anyway <laughs> my bad she said i think a lot of people in our political landscape are land- oh my god i'm done i <laughs> <laughs> she said i think a lot of people in our political landscapes are just feeling like we need to huddle under the bleachers and figure out a plan to make things better so that was very straightforward yeah, and and she, you know, she wrote it after after the midterm elections, and that's right after she started being political for the first time. So that was a mm-hmm. big deal for Taylor. She supported some Democratic candidates from Tennessee. They ended up losing, but um, Taylor publicly spoke out because a lot of people, I think, assumed, okay, she started as a country girl. Taylor, um, she's from Pennsylvania. She's going to be Republican. And she also never spoke about it a lot. She always avoided the question. She always mm-hmm. said, oh, I don't get into politics. It's too divisive and stuff like that. And a lot of times celebrities say that when they're Republican um, right, because well, it, they, they know that that could draw some criticism. So they just stay quiet. Democratic under, celebrities will be outspoken about it. Yeah. Under counsel. I mean, even in the, the documentary, her father's like, don't don't go yeah. there. And I'm glad you bring that up, Amy, because in Miss Americana, the documentary on Netflix, there's this really big emotional scene, and we're going to play a little clip here. And so this is Taylor talking to her people. So, like, her mom is with her. Her mom is 
like Team Taylor on this one, I think. Yeah. And then she's talking definitely. to a bunch of guys, including her dad, about wanting to get political and post things on social media for the first time. And so here Taylor is really emotional talking about like what she wants to say. For 12 years, we've not got involved with politics or religion. Yeah, but this is on the home front. And also, back in the presidential election, I was in such a horrendous place that I wasn't going to pop my head out of the sand for why anything. Why would you? I mean, does Bob Hope do well, it? Why, does Crosby well, do it? Does, does Mick hey, Jackson do hell? it? Come on. You know, what I'm saying right now is... Bob it, Hope First of all, Crosby. these aren't your dad's celebrities and these aren't your dad's Republicans. Well, hey, imagine if we came to you and said, hey, we've got this idea that we could halve the number of people that come to you next to it. And the other thing, just from a security so standpoint, you think people, Taylor Swift comes out against Trump. I don't care if they write that. I'm sad that I didn't two years ago, but I can't change that. I'm saying right now that this is something that I know is right, and you guys, I need to be on the right side of history. Taylor, and if he Taylor, doesn't win, that at least I, I, at least I tried. Taylor, here's the here's the problem. I just want to read you what I wrote, and I'm going to try to start. I just really want you to know that this is important to me. I this totally is something agree that, have you, with have the you issue. Just, but have let you me heard explain to you. Hers? Have let, you just yes, heard? I've read the entire thing, and the bottom line right now, I'm terrified. I'm the guy that went out and bought armored cars. I worry for her safety as much as anybody does. Maybe more. It really is a big deal to me. She votes against against fair pay for women. She votes against the reauthorization of the of the Violence Against Women Act, which is just basically protecting us from domestic abuse and stalking. Stalking. She votes, she thinks that, that if you're a gay couple, or even if you look like a gay couple, you should be allowed to be kicked out of a restaurant. It's really basic human rights, and it's right and wrong at this point, and I can't see another commercial and see her disguising these policies behind the words Tennessee Christian values. Those aren't Tennessee Christian values. I live in Tennessee. I am Christian. That's not what we stand for. I need to do this. I need you to just I just need you to forgive me for doing it because I'm doing it. And so it's rare to see some emotion from her in that, mm-hmm. which is pretty Especially neat. Especially like that. Like she was like holding back tears and then even not even holding back tears, like talking about yeah. it. And then I love when it w- was kind of a discussion, but then she gets to the point where she was like, I'm going to need you to forgive me because I'm going to do this. Like, mm-hmm. she's like, I, which is so crazy to think about like someone like having to talk to people about what you can be outspoken about, you Permission. know, sure. right. Well, like, but you also have to realize how big of a deal this was. Now that was such a long time ago that this was a problem, but this is what ended the Dixie careers, chi- the, the Dixie <laughs> chicks career, for sure. whenever they criticized president Bush and that ended up destroying their career. So she was afraid to speak up about political issues because of how much backlash people have faced before her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she's, and she's, she's not wrong for feeling that, you know, a lot of celebrities stay silent and they just don't mm-hmm. say anything. And so it is a big deal. She is, young she is a woman she does have these things going against her and she knows that and so it was a big deal so it does bother me when people kind of uh make fun of taylor for getting so emotional in that moment i've heard that criticism before like whatever just post it who cares it's a big deal that's a business move you're one of the most powerful people in the industry and in a clip it's not in this what we just played but part of it one someone on her team i don't remember if it was her dad or not but they were like hey taylor you posting this and getting political is the same thing as if we said, hey, here's an idea where 50% of your audience won't come to your show next year. Like, that's not a smart business move for someone. It's mm-hmm. a risk, and she took mm-hmm. that risk. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie. I am not political. I don't like hearing about politics. I don't want to talk about it because most likely what you have to say, I don't really care to hear about either way. It, it, we're either we're going to agree or not agree. It's not up for debate. I don't want to have to hear. Let's just let, let's just not ever talk about politics. And I know that that's not a healthy way to look at things, but that is personally the way that I feel. So yeah. whenever I first went to go watch Miss Americana, I was very iffy about it because I'm like, Am I going to like this? Am I going to like? I thought it was going to be a whole propaganda documentary. Mm -hmm. And it was not. She does state the way that she feels. And she has 
every reason to back it up. It wasn't a down your throat. This is the only way to vote. This is the only way that I feel. And I was very happy that I was able to watch that. Yeah, it was a lot I, I loved, I love the way, I love the way that she presented it though, because she had facts, emotions and everything for the way that she felt. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a vote for who I want you to vote for, vote with me. It was not like that at all. It went through her whole journey and why she arrived to this decision and then had everything to back it up. And I just, I thought it was beautiful. I was afraid that I wasn't going to like it, but that was silly me because Taylor did it. Of course it was done correctly. <laughs> I cried. I cried watching that mm -hmm. documentary. I think multiple mm -hmm. times. Yeah. In that documentary, there's way more than just politics that she gets right. into. Um, she gets into just like her body image and how the media has affected her. It's mm -hmm. really, it's a really powerful thing. Yeah, going And so hiding. one thing, while I'm not the biggest fan of the song, one thing I do like when it does come to the high school imagery is that, you know, she used to use it in her earlier songs, like on Fearless and stuff like that. She would use it, but now she's kind of using it not as like an optimistic way. Like before it was like, she's a freshman in high school. Everything's optimistic. The, you know, the world is ahead of her. And now someone online said, it's almost like she's the senior, like that's been jaded that's mm -hmm. gone through the ringer of high school and now you can kind of look mm -hmm. back and be like, eh, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Mm -hmm. So I like that. That's pretty well, cool. And it's also interesting to think like maybe for us, you know, being fans of Taylor's entire discography, it feels a little cliche doing the whole high school, you know, mm -hmm. metaphor. But if you really think about it, it's a really good way. Like most people, probably went to high school you know and right. like most people probably <laughs> yeah. know the stereotypics of high school so if you're trying to get like a point across metaphorically to get everybody to relate to it you know high school drama kind of is a good way because after high school after college so many people have different lives and different right everything but you every movie has the same high school stereotypes every tv show you know what i mean so it's kind right. of it's kind it's of a really good yeah, it's a good way for everybody to understand, like, okay, yeah, the scoreboard and the cheerleader chant at the end, like, you know? The most relatable imagery. Yes. Well, and why bash her for using that in her music? But what are we watching? We're watching <laughs> Elder Banks, and we're wa we're watching all the Gossip teen Girl. drama. That's yeah, that's the kind of stuff that we like. I had my little twelve year old sister over this weekend, and her and I are reading some of the same books yeah. because I read all the young adults. So I mean, why bash her whenever that's our true. guilty pleasure true. all the time? Yeah, that is so mm -hmm. true. I yeah, guilty, guilty as charged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. One of the mm -hmm. lines that's very obvious that she's talking about politics, it's a really good line. She says, American glory faded before me. Now I'm feeling hopeless, ripped up my prom dress, running mm -hmm. through rose thorns. I saw the scoreboard and ran for my life. So she's not really hiding how she feels about just the state of politics and divisiveness um, mm -hmm. that's in it. And then you, also in the chorus, she sings, uh, we'll paint the town blue. And so... Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, blue is the color for Democrats. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, I have this whole thing I found on Reddit, this whole thread that said that this song even kind of sounds like it's Hillary Clinton's point of view from losing the election to Trump. Mm. And mm. that it's because... She says, then I was 16, lost in the lights. 2016 is whenever Hillary lost. American glory faded before. Taylor Swift used to be very patriotic, and she would post Fourth of July parties oh, and yeah. all these pictures, but she has not since 2016. Mm -hmm. I, saw, I saw the scoreboard and ran for my life, the votes, paint the town blue, Democrat, rolling fake dice, fake could allude to the fake news, Voted most likely, not voted president, but America still loved her. My team is losing, battered and bruising. Democrats feel like they lost more than the election. I see the high fives between the bad guys, and that's the 1% seemingly winning more tax cuts, bad guys getting away with bad things. American stories burning before me. A lot of true Americans who are working class that are losing. Hmm. Boys will be boys then when the wise men, darling, I'm scared. Boys uh, have covered up many wrong things that they've done by men. 
No cameras catch my muffled cries. No cameras catch my pageant smile. She cried in quiet, kept a stoic face. That's because people didn't post pictures of Hillary with a happy face after the election. They went and got pictures of her looking sad and gloomy the whole time. Kind of like what Justin Bieber's saying now. He's right. saying, you're taking the worst photos or bad photos of me mm -hmm. and posting that, where now I have a sad face being a loser. So that was one theory that I think really holds up. Well, and yeah. I, I, I think that's interesting, Lacey, because she even said in an interview with Vogue a few weeks before the this, this song came out, she said the summer before the election, all people were saying was she's calculated, she's manipulative, she's not what she seems, she's a snake, she's a liar. And those are the exact same insults that people were throwing at Hillary. So Taylor mm -hmm. said, would I be an endorsement or would I be a liability? Like, oh, look, snakes of a feather True. flock together, mm -hmm. two lying women, two nasty women. So she... I think Taylor is fully aware of, you know, A, that comparison right. and also B, I mean, she had to really think of every single possibility, every single way that like her words would get twisted, you know, mm -hmm. and both in I the like, song mm -hmm. and on social media. I like uh, what Taylor said in an interview with The Guardian. Um, she was talking about feeling conflicted about just kind of how America stands now when talking about this song. She said, the thing I can't get over right now is the gaslighting in the American public into being like, if you hate the president, you hate America. We're a democracy, at least we're supposed to be, and you're allowed to disagree, dissent, and debate. Mm -hmm. So I like that. And so this song is political, but it also has to do with women's struggles mm -hmm. because boys will be boys. That could also be a reference to Me Too because that mm -hmm. was while all the Me Too was going up and people were just saying, well, just forgive them because they're just boys. It's yep. going to be okay. Yeah, chalking it up to men behaving badly. Oh, boys will be yeah. boys. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a weak excuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it is>. right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. my favorite lyric which i think is so powerful is you play stupid games you win stupid prizes that is a good one and i feel like i, I didn't it. hear that I, I feel like i didn't hear that saying that much before this song but i feel like now i'm hearing it a lot more a lot? i so didn't I don't, know i don't know if she's just made me aware of it so now that i i hear it more or what but yeah i like that phrase yeah i i never knew it was like a phrase I always thought when people were saying it, they were using like they were quoting Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I'm, okay, I've never heard it other than this song, so I I don't know where y'all are hearing it or I that it just was like, a phrase. It, it just I don't know in random comments thing. online or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, you okay. know, it's just a thing people say. Yeah. <laughs> I also read this. Someone said, I think Joe Alwyn being British may have come into play in this song as well, because after Trump came to power, Taylor went and spent time in England and hid out a lot. And she admits that she didn't want to face the press. I mean, I think we all know that mm -hmm. part's unrelated, but still, whenever she ran away and went and hung out in England for a long time, um, and she was tempted to just block out the noise and not get involved into the politics and um, stay abroad and, and, and ignore the madness. But in the end, she stops running away and comes back to America to her fellow blue Americans since she does love her country and decided that this is a fight and decided to be vocal about it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Those, yeah, uh, sure. those cheerleader details go fight win. Which is, mm -hmm. which is my favorite because I love how she uses the go fight win, but then changes it at the end because it's like, I don't want you to go. I don't really want to fight because nobody's going to win. Like she repeats that over and over again. And then at the end, she changes it to I'll never let you go because I know this is a fight that someday we're going to win. I it's love so that because like it is so Taylor and you spend the whole song, you know, feeling defeated. And then at the very end, she's like, no, like we're going to we're going to fight this. And then you kind of have like the only the young song echoing in the background, but uh -huh. <laughs> you, you just like, I, I like listening to the song in full just for that ending of the chant mm -hmm. of the go fight win chant. <laughs> it's a good ending. Like the, uh, why is my, my, my mind blank? The Rebecca Harkness song. Um, it's a good, uh, uh, twist on the story. Oh, and then it was bought by me. And then it was bought by part. me. Yeah. It was <laughs> mm -hmm. same kind of vibe. It's optimistic. Yeah. Mm hmm. So this song is giving people a lot of vibes from another one of her songs. And um, let's see if you can hear the simulation. The what? <laughs> the, the similarity? <laughs> yes. The similarity between these two songs. Now I just 
I, I, I caught the Anna. I'm sorry. I can't speak right now. Um, and they're both track sevens. All eyes on you, my magician. All eyes on us. You make everyone disappear. King glory faded before me. Now I'm feeling hopeless. Ripped up my prom dress. So I think we all probably felt the So It Goes vibes mm-hmm. immediately from yeah, this song. So, but sure. some people... Some people are also saying that it reminds them of change from Fearless, which we just got to break down, that these things will change. Can you feel it now? So it's all just those happy political vibes. Mm -hmm. It's not happy. It's just all those political (laughs) vibes. It's like (laughs) low-key reputation, happy, fearless vibes in a way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, Lover lover is when she's definitely uh, stepping out of her comfort zone and kind of not really hiding her feelings on controversial topics and stuff like that. And I love that. It's pretty cool. Especially because this is the first album that she owns, and so I feel like she can finally, you know, she's like, if it, it, it's on, it's on her. Like, oh, yeah, it takes yeah. courage. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. She can I, use her own mm-hmm. voice. If it wasn't clear, I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just saying that because now you think she's gonna listen? <laughs> um, I'm, Do I need to clip that out and put it on TikTok, Anna? <laughs> when was it obvious that I was obsessed with her? Was it when I thought she listened to our podcast? Was it when we started the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> way, way before. <laughs> when did it become obvious? <laughs> um. Does anybody have anything else? Mm-mm. That's all I have. Okay. So, what are you and Amy gonna do now? Are y'all gonna <laughs> hang out now that y'all are at the house together? Maybe have some lunch. Oh, that's a great What's idea. the plan? I don't know. What's for lunch, Amy? I, well, I guess Ow. you should be asking uh, me. Oh, that. I don't know. wow. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I really didn't mean that as like some sort of sexy <laughs> thing. <laughs> uh, sure, it just came out naturally. <laughs> Alexa, play the man by Taylor song. Swift, please. Thank you. Yeah. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> well. That's it for this episode of 13. A- Searching. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, my Alexa turned on when I said that. Thank you. It's 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast featuring Alexa. Ask Alexa if she listens to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. <laughs> Hold on. Now it's going to start playing me. Sorry. <laughs> no. I'm so sorry. It's Okay. Anna, before you go, do you have any plans for TikTok? Is there anything that you're going to do now to get her attention? Man, I've been trying to get her attention without her even being on TikTok. Let's be, <laughs> let's That's be true. honest. That's true. Yeah, I already posted a TikTok of me freaking out about her joining TikTok mm-hmm. um, on our page at the 13 Podcast. <laughs> Nick, Amy, while you guys are together, feel free to make some TikToks together. That would be awesome. We should, we should just start tagging her in the comments of all of our videos so she can just yes. go in in the past. Mm-hmm. And like maybe maybe she'll check her notifications. <gasps> yes. And then after like two or three, she'll be like, wait, these are all from the same account. Let me check this account out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think she'll start following people because she doesn't follow people on her no. other social medias? No, I don't no, think so. but I bet I bet she's gonna kind of use TikTok the way she uses Tumblr and like like things and comment on mm-hmm. things. I don't know if she'll follow necessarily. I don't even think she'll. I don't think she'll post that much. To yeah, be honest. probably not. Um, but I do think she's gonna be lurking on there, and I think she's gonna let us know that she's lurking. Yes. Wait, if she's going to use it like she does Tumblr, that's how she would find out information about people and then send them something for, here's your new dorm room. I noticed you were missing mm-hmm. this. Here's this. So what if she does that to us? So we need, a, we need to make sure we include our mailing addresses in our TikToks. Oh, I don't know <laughs> so how she sees I them. feel about yeah. that. Maybe for the yeah. um, uh, We do have shit. a work address. Okay. Work, yeah. Work what, what's our work address? I can't think of it right now, but you can East Google Las it. Las Boulevard. Yeah, she's gonna C two ten. Man, I'm Early nervous. Texas. She's gonna go. She's gonna find the video of us talking about how we're gonna buy all the tickets to all of her concerts, and she's gonna get nervous. She's gonna be like, "Oh no, these four maniacs are just gonna be at all of my <laughs> shows now." <laughs> I'm nervous. But we can be in the nosebleed, and then her mom can come get us <laughs> and move us down to the nice section. Because if we're going to all the concerts, that's gonna be expensive. Yeah, that's yeah, true. definitely. That's and great. I think the mm-hmm. key to doing that is like showing up really early and sitting in the nosebleeds. So then they're just like mm-hmm. walking out. They're like, "Oh, it's seven hours until the show. <laughs> Who are the? What are those people doing there?" And then they'll upgrade us. Which I don't know that I've ever no, done. You have not. I don't know that I've ever shown up early for a concert. No. Weren't you guys late yeah, for the I reputation will. tour, Amy um, and Lacey? We weren't Lacey? late, but we weren't. We, we weren't trying to see. Show. 
Camila. Yeah. We we got there for Charlie XCX, oh, okay. but we were off doing other things because we didn't care. You gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That was intentional. We were right. there in enough time. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that does it for this episode of 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Be sure you subscribe to us wherever you're listening to this podcast right now, whatever podcasting platform you love. We are there. Be sure to give us a five star rating and leave us a good review and join us next time because we're going to break down Taylor's song, Paper Rings. Thanks for listening to 13, a Taylor Swift fan podcast. Subscribe for free and leave a positive review on Apple Podcasts. Spotify, or Google Podcasts.